Have you ever done this when out riding? Or perhaps this. Push upper body up, move lower body out, uh, engage the front brake, oh, uh, uh, lift the rear brake, or oh, remember to uh, stick the head out and uh, be relaxed in the elbow, and then... Um, uh, uh, uh. Or maybe this? Here are five things many motorcyclists do wrong. Number one, focus on track cornering techniques when riding on the street. There are many techniques that racers use when competing on a track. For example, blipping the rear brake before engaging the front brake to lower the motorcycle. Or for example, dangling their leg to get leverage and feeling when backing it into a corner. Anyone who wants to become a faster and safer rider can learn these techniques on a track. It's not like it's rocket science or unattainable for any average rider. Trying to use these types of techniques when riding on the street can become a problem. Especially if the rider is not familiar with much more important techniques, such as turning in at the right location, looking where we want to go, trail braking, rolling the throttle only after we have reached a desired lean angle, relaxing on the handlebars, and so forth. One part of the problem is that the rider will be trying to do too many things at once. Push upper body up, move lower body out, uh, engage the front brake, oh, uh, lift the rear brake, or remember to uh, stick the head out and uh, be relaxed in the elbow, and then um, uh, uh, roll the throttle. No, 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 wait, what? Which ends up with the rider not doing a single thing right. Professional motorcycle racers do not overload their brains when performing all these motions, because they have practiced them so many times that a lot of the steps are done subconsciously. They achieve this through deliberate practice or deliberately practicing specific steps over and over. This is really how any professional athlete within any sport practice. When riding on the street, we should ride at a pace where racing techniques do not need to be utilized. Instead of trying to learn how, for example, to push your elbow far into the corner, perfect basic skills such as turning in at the right time, relaxing on the handlebars, looking through the corners, and smooth throttle control. Perfecting these basic skills will make you a better rider very quickly. Number two, backing it in on the street. Many riders who have seen their MotoGP heroes slide the rear wheel into corners, then go out and try to do the same thing when riding with their friends on the street. The problem here is that almost all amateur riders who think they are backing it in are really just locking up the rear wheel before going into the corner. So first of all, this is not backing it in. Backing it in can be used to go through some very specific tight corners on a racetrack to great effect. When going really fast on a racetrack, the rear brake does not even have to be used when backing it in. You see, as a racer is braking hard with the front brake, the load is transferred forward and the rear wheel becomes really light, almost going up into the air. Combine the load transfer with engine braking from releasing the throttle and voila, the rear will slide when going into the corner. This happens without the rider even consciously trying to back it in. A lot of riders, myself included, like to use the rear brake to control this slide very precisely. The point at which the slide starts and stops is very important. If done wrong, backing it in will in fact slow the rider down significantly, resulting in worse lap times than if not backing it in. Backing it in on the street has pretty much zero advantages, and most riders who try to use it on the street just end up looking really foolish, locking up the rear wheel before the corner, and then proudly telling their friends at the coffee shop they can back it in like Marquez. Riding around locking up the rear wheel on the street just looks stupid and it can turn out to be dangerous. Number 3. Worried on the handlebars. Being worried on the handlebars means that we correct our line several times in the corners. The way we want to take a corner is to deliberately turn in once using counter steering, relaxing as much as possible on the handlebars. We do not want to end up correcting our line by giving a bunch of input to the handlebars in the middle of the corner. This ends up upsetting the bike and is usually a sign of either turning in too early, which means we have to correct our line if we don't want to run out of road, or holding onto the handlebars too hard. Many riders who like to hang off a lot in the corners also end up holding onto the handlebars too hard, simply because they are not using their legs and have not developed the core strength needed to be completely relaxed in their arms and hands while hanging off. 
If you notice that you tend to turn or correct the motorcycle a lot inside of the corners, then try this out. First of all, slow down and ride well below your own ability. Then, relax your arms and hands. You should be able to flap your elbows like a chicken at all times inside of a corner. And then practice turning in later in corners. Since you're going slow, if you end up turning in a bit later than desired, this is not going to be an issue. You will soon intuitively learn what a good turn in point is. Number 4. Never using the rear brake. While we should not use the rear brake for racing specific techniques when riding on the street, this doesn't mean that the rear brake has no function for street riding. The rear brake is a very good tool to stabilize the bike at slow speeds and to come to a smooth stop anywhere. Try out riding in a circle at very slow speeds in an empty parking lot. If you drag the rear brake while doing so, you will soon find that it becomes much easier to balance the bike in this way. Anytime when you do tight maneuvers at slow speed on a motorcycle, it's a good idea to engage the rear brake to maintain balance. When you've practiced this enough, you will be able to come to a full stop without putting your feet down. Number 5. Go too fast into blind corners. This is a mistake that probably all motorcycle riders have done at some point or another when riding on the street. We're out with our friends riding in the canyons, riding at a slightly higher pace than we would have if we were just commuting to work or going to the store. Many corners in forests, canyons, etc. are blind, meaning we cannot see the exit of the corner. Going fast and especially accelerating before we see the exit in these corners can be very dangerous. There can be a stopped car standing in the middle of the road, an animal crossing, a fallen tree, slippery leaves on the ground, gravel, and so forth. If we cannot see the exit of the corner, it is very important to slow down appropriately. It can be especially useful to use trail braking far into these corners, as this means we have already loaded up the front tire, which means we can increase the brake pressure quickly without losing grip if something is stopped in the middle of the road. Since it is possible that there might be an obstacle we don't know about after the blind corner, we should treat all of them like there is something there. Simply carrying less speed and engaging the brakes in the corner can be the difference between having a great story about that time when we stopped a few meters short of a big moose and a trip to the hospital. Remember to subscribe to my channel. There is always something new to learn. Cause baby I feel real good and I wish I was